Hello everyone, uh, my tooth is still killing me, so I'll definitely go for a nice craft beer or two after I make this video. And that being said, welcome to the final round of the 2013 Candidates Tournament. Uh, we're gonna kick it off with Magnus Carlsen versus Peter Swidler. Now, as you've seen in my previous video, these are the standings after uh, the penultimate round. It's uh, Carlsen and Kramnik battling it out, both uh, eight and a half points. And uh, Swidler, even if he wins this game, uh, uh, well, he can have 8 points, but he can never win the Candidates Tournament. So it's either Carlsen or Kramnik. And uh, for the final game, Carlsen could not be in a better position. Uh, so if Carlsen and Kramnik uh, finish the game with the same uh, number of points, like uh, if they both draw their games, they both have 9 points, uh, Carlsen will win because he has uh, better uh, additional criteria. Uh, and uh, he does have the white pieces against Peter Swidler. He already defeated Peter Swidler in this tournament with the black pieces. So definitely uh, he could not be in a better situation. So before we check out the game, we do have some photos of this round uh, here. Uh, as usual, uh, a bunch of photographers uh, uh, photo uh, photographing Magnus Carlsen before the game. Uh, here we have uh, a nice game of Peter Swidler. He's ready for war, as you can see. Uh, also a nice close-up of Magnus Carlsen checking out Swidler, uh, you know, for, for any weaknesses. And uh, here we have uh, also a, a nice photo of Swidler and Carlsen. Uh, you can see that Carlsen is uh, pretty stressed out or who knows what he's doing, but you know, it's, uh, th the stress is real. He has, to, uh, he has to at least draw this game. He cannot allow uh, a loss in this game. Uh, and he's playing uh, against Peter Swidler who defeated Vasily Vanchuk. And Vasily Vanchuk is the only player who defeated Magnus Carlsen in this tournament. So let's see this game so far. Uh, Carlsen has the white pieces and he opens with e4. Uh, we have e5, knight to f3, knight to c6, and bishop to b5. So the Ruy Lopez. Uh, just a second there. Okay, so bishop to b5, the Ruy Lopez, and a6, Morphe's defense. Bishop to a4, knight to f6, we have castles, bishop to e7, uh, d3, b5 now, bishop to b3, d6, pretty standard, uh, a3, uh, Swidler castles, knight to c3, and bishop to b7. Uh, bishop to d2, we have queen to d7, and a4 now. Uh, trying to break open uh, here on the queen side. And here you can go something like knight to a5, uh, after bishop a2 go c5, uh, but uh, Swidler goes for a different idea. He goes knight to d8, uh, which is uh, somewhat different, but, but also very nice. Uh, we have a captures on b5, a captures on b5, rook captures on a8, bishop captures, and now knight to e2, preparing to bring the knight over to g3, uh, where the knight will have some nice squares like f5 and h5, and if black wants to stop this, he will have to weaken his king's position with the g6. So knight to e6, that's a very nice square for the knight, uh, occupying, uh, maybe occupying f4 in the future, d4 will be maybe available, and if white wants to get rid of the strong knight, he will have to give up the bishop pair. So, knight to g3, c5 now, expanding as expected, knight comes to f5, we have bishop to d8, not allowing knight to capture the bishop, and now c4. Uh, b captures on c4, bishop captures on c4, and bishop to c7 now. Uh, we have rook to e1, uh, rook to e8, and queen to c1 now. Uh, knight to h5, uh, preparing to bring the knight over to f4. We have g3, uh, Carlsen doesn't allow it, uh, g6. Kicking the knight away from f5, knight to h6 check, king to g7, and here comes uh, the, the 23rd move, knight to g5. A very nice idea, of course, uh, everyone sees that king captures on h6 is uh, basically suicide. Uh, if you do this, then knight captures here, the knight will cover g7, and also there's a discovered check from the bishop, and uh, black is completely lost here. After g5, bishop captures, king g6 now... Uh, bishop h6 preparing queen g5 checkmate, you have to prevent this to, to guard g5, but now knight captures, uh, black is down a piece and his king is on g6, this is this is terrible. So after knight g5, Swidler simply played knight captures, uh, we have bishop captures and uh, d5 now. e captures, bishop captures and knight to g4. Uh, we have bishop to f3, uh, and here Carlsen plays bishop to f6 check. And this is a very nice move, uh, but the problem is, uh, after this bishop to f6 move, Carlsen had only 5 minutes on the clock. So this is the first game, the last game of the tournament, but the first game in this tournament where Carlsen is in time trouble. Uh, the problem is, uh, if you capture it with knight captures on f6, queen to h6 check is coming, king to h8, and then 
uh, of course knight captures an f6 and there is no defense against queen captures on h7 with checkmate so uh, after bishop to f6 Svidor of course of course went king to g8 but still Carlsen has only five minutes on the clock and now he has to figure out a plan uh, knight to h6 check uh, only move king to f8 and now queen to e3. Carlsen plays the strongest move, uh, well, as, as many times recommended by the engine, uh, but the problem is after Carlsen played queen to e3 move, he only had one minute on the clock. And this is the reason, uh, I mean, it's the first game Carlsen was in time trouble and he spent more time than usual on moves he would uh, usually make uh, because this game is, is so important. He has to uh, really play this game uh, to the best of his abilities if he wants to become challenger uh, for the World Chess Championship. So, okay, uh, bishop back to b7, and now bishop to h4. Uh, you can't... Uh, queen captures on c5 with check doesn't really do anything. After bishop to d6 blocking, uh, there's no way to prevent knight captures on f6, so you're just going to lose a bishop there. So, after bishop to b7, bishop to h4, not allowing knight captures bishop, uh, queen to h3, and now f3. Uh, well, you can't really blame Carlsen for, for blocking checkmate with f3. Uh, a stronger move was bishop to d5, but Carlsen had less than a minute on the clock, and such a move, uh, there was simply uh, not enough time to calculate. You have to uh, give up a piece temporarily to, <laughs> for this, because here comes bishop captures, and now queen captures on c5 with check. King moves, attacking the knight on h6, Queen captures on d5, and now uh, king captures on h6 doesn't work because white will win this game. Uh, if king captures, then comes queen captures on f7, attacking the rook on e8 and also the bishop on c7. So after rook to c8 defending, only move that will uh, defend both pieces, then comes queen to, e, uh, queen to e7, preparing bishop to g5 checkmate. Once you stop this, queen to f5, then comes rook to c1 with the threat of rook captures on c7. And after black prevents this, bishop to b6, now uh, threatening queen to f2 checkmate, uh, queen to f2 check, uh, then uh, you win with bishop to g5 check, queen captures, king, queen captures, king captures, and rook captures there. And it's uh, a knight and bishop against the rook, but Carlsen will also be up two pawns, so perhaps not winning for white, but definitely better for white. So yeah, uh, bishop to d5 definitely a better defending resource, but uh, Carlsen is m less than a minute on the clock. So f3, uh, we have knight to f4, now again, a very nice move by Swidler, again threatening checkmate on g2, uh, Carlsen captures it, g captures on f4, queen captures on h4 now, as the pawn is no longer defending the bishop, uh, and knight captures on f7, grabbing a very nice pawn. Uh, bishop captures on f3. Of course, you cannot capture the bishop because queen captures uh, rook on e1. So queen to f2, offering a trade of queens, but now queen g4 check. Queen g3 blocking, and now pawn captures on f4, simply grabbing another pawn. Uh, we have rook captures, king captures, and queen captures on g4. Bishop captures on g4, knight to g5. Uh, h6, kicking away the knight, knight back to f7, and now h5. Uh, knight to h6 attacking the bishop and bishop to d1. This is move 40. Uh, both Carlsen and Svidler made their 40th move, so time, time control has been reached. And now Carlsen is no longer in time trouble, uh, but Svidler is up a pawn and he does have the bishop pair and a better position. And this position is winning for black. And uh, when uh, black is, you know, maneuvered by, by a player of Svidler's caliber, then it's a winning position regardless of who he's playing against. King to f2 was played, now comes f3, uh, h3, bishop to f4, uh, we have knight to f7, g5 now, simply preparing to push g4, uh, king to e1, and now g4, of course, uh, the bishop uh, on d1 is, is out of the question, because simply g3, king e1, g2, uh, if the king blocks bishop to e3 or bishop to h2, but this is maybe like forced, a queen comes into the game, it's all over for white. So after g4, h captures on g4, pawn captures, we have king captures on d1, uh, g3, now comes king e1, g2, king f2, and after bishop to h2, the same variation we, we basically just shown, uh, ended the game, and it was in this position that uh, Magnus Scalson resigned the game without... Uh, without hoping for a miracle because it would, it would be simply ridiculous uh, but yeah he correctly resigned 
and uh, the the funny thing is uh, there will be a press conference after this game and uh, there will be a link in the description below feel free to check out that there is a, an interview with both Swidler and Carlson and by the time this game ended uh, Kramnik's game against Ivanchuk was still going on so uh, the only thing that could uh, help Carlson win this uh, candidate's tournament is <laughs> Uh, if Kramnik loses his game against Ivarchuk. So the, on, the only player uh, in the world who can help Ma Magnus Carlsen become a challenger to Vishwanathan Anand uh, is none other than Vasily Ivanchuk. But for that, uh, we will have to check out uh, another video that will be the final video in, in the 2013 candidate series. Uh, and we're going to check out what happens in the game uh, Vladimir Kramnik versus Vasily Ivanchuk. And it's interesting, before that game, Ivanchuk versus Kramnik, Ivanchuk said in an interview uh, after round 13 that he doesn't really care about his game against Kramnik. It doesn't really affect the standings, the tournament, nothing. Uh, that, you know, it'd be better if he just uh, focuses on his next tournament. So, yeah, uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank... Uh, Yevgen Viborov, Rendi Renata, Loisos Agathangelo, Jonathan Abra John Abraham, and the Guy Chen for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check through all my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and uh, I will see you soon. Uh, tomorrow, probably with uh, the fourth round of the Norway Chess Championship. Uh, but prior to that, I will try to upload the final uh, game of the 2013 Candidates Tournament. Thank you all, and uh, I'll see you soon. I'm going to get that craft beer now.